Okay, welcome everyone for the weekly discussion in English medium on Tuesday. We are going to have about one hour and we have appointed topic for the discussion. Before going into the appointed topic, I would like to invite anyone is if anyone is having any other suggestion topic or any interview reports to be reported. We can take few minutes and then uh, go to the Parainavagge that we appointed one. So if you have, please uh, take time for the sake of discussion. Uh, Sorry, Ban. This yeah. is one report for today's session. Uh, with your permission, I'd like to present it. Yeah. Dear Bante, I am 17 years old and this is my lying down experience. I laid on my stomach, closed my eyes and immediately I weight on my eyelids. I was tired prior to starting the meditation and when I closed my eyes, I could feel the tiredness as a weight hanging over me. I tried to focus on my breathing but soon found myself watching the tiredness. I don't know how long I was watching it for before I gave in gave into it and woke up to my alarm. Please advise me. Teruan Sarnai. This is from Onaya. That's the end of the report, Bhante. Yeah, so when you are starting with the lying down situation, you have to expect because it is inviting you to be lethargic and uh, of course for the relaxation it is good but uh, it is more towards a sleepiness, slimy nature. So therefore you have to, before going into the session, you have to understand the waking up position as well as the, the slimy position congealing position so therefore it is good for the relaxation but if you are aware of the relaxation if you are awakening into the relaxation while relaxing you can be alert you can be awakened in uh, brain waves this is one part of the body or eye signals ear signals they are coming down but the vigilance and the diligence sometimes they call theta waves, they are increasing. So there is a, two things are happening. One thing is bodily relaxation. No the sympathetic nervous system is not taking any decision. But the parasympathetic things are happening. You can be aware relaxation happens with the, that will give the maximum luxurious uh, relaxation. But when when there is happen when there is nothing happen, so nothing happen and relaxation is two things the modern civilization cannot understand. They think the ha- happiness and everything happened with the luxurious uh, materialism. But you know, lying down, your eyes are not there, your, your the visual objects not there, eye ear is not there, sound is not there. All the organs are almost shut. And therefore, if you are not develop, having, if you do not have a developed mind, uh, mind will be slopped and topper. But the Buddha says, be aware, when there is nothing happen, there's a kind of a vigilance, kind of a diligence is increasing. If that is happening, position may be lying down, but uh, you can understand the mind is awakened. Lying, uh, calming down happen in the physical body, basically the sympathetic nervous system. So basically the intentional activities will be reduced, but the mind knows how to find the relaxation within itself. So you are too young. You have to continue. Now you are 17, now I am 70, you are 17, I am 71. One seven. So I am very rhetoric and I can tell you after so much of years, so you are better than me when you become seven one, not one seven. Because at the seventeen, I was just a bumpkin, nothing related to this kind of meditation of nothing. But it no harm. I mean, I am so happy now because the, don't manipulate. Just lie down and be aware when there is no manipulations. There is a one part of brain, one waves are really, really become vigilant and diligent and uh, awakening. 
that is happening and the body is becoming very calm. The Buddha explained him so nicely, unlucky enough, no Buddhists know about it. They are talking about total calmness or total awakening. There is no. This part is calming down, this part is awakening. So please take time and uh, report to us. We are very happy to share with you. are sharing, we are appreciating. Thank you, Bhante. There is no more reports. Okay. So if there are no uh, other things to be discussed, I would like to invite Venerable Buddha to continue with the the place where we stopped last time. Okay, so uh, we were just getting to the last uh, stanza in this uh, sutta, uh, but I might just go back over the 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 twelfth, the the one just prior, so that we can uh, uh, approach the last one uh, in a nice way. So the la- sec- twelfth stanza goes: because of a view or an opinion, a Veda master does not become conceited, for he does not identify with them. Not led by Kama or by what is heard, he is not drawn by any abodes. For one detached from perception, there are no knots. For one liberated by wisdom, there are no delusions. But those who have grasped perceptions and views wander in the world, creating friction. So here in the the last two verses, we can see that, that the Buddha brings together the two big threads that he is tackling in the sutta, which is the uh, the, the way that views uh, in, enmesh people and the way that conceitedness enmesh people. And uh, so this is a, a major theme of the Sutta Nipada, is the role of views on the one hand and the role of conceitedness on the other. So we have here uh, what he calls a Veda master, so uh, in the in the time of the Buddha, um, before the Buddha, there was uh, th- there was this uh, Brahmanic period, the Brahmins, and uh, the Vedas were their sacred texts. And so here he's talking about a, a genuine Veda master, somebody who has uh, penetrated knowledge, uh, direct knowledge, not somebody who just knows it from books or can recite it from memory. Uh, at, at that time, um, and even to this present time, these Vedas are, are held, uh, upheld as sacred texts uh, that have been passed down through the aeons from the rishis. And, um, you know, so these can be, these doctrinal texts can be pulled out and, and kind of beaten over, you, you get beaten over the head with these ideas or, you know, as if they're sacred from directly from the God or something like that. So these are, are views that are held in, in great, um, in a kind of ironclad way. But here the, the Buddha is, is contrasting it with a, a true Veda master who is, is somebody who is not conceited. And uh, they, they're not bound by views or opinions um, because they don't identify with them. So the, the heart of the matter here is that they don't have an identification with uh, with uh, the views, they they don't perceive themselves as uh, superior, inferior, or the same as. Um, so therefore, th- a view doesn't have any power over them. Like I am better than you, um, and that uh, that uh, or I am inferior to you, and um, so not led by karma uh, or what is heard, he is not drawn to any abodes. So here, uh, the abode is is like um, your your domain, your, your the ground that you stand on, the ideology that you stand on. Um, you're not drawn to defend any areas. You know, you don't need to defend. Uh, this is where I stand on this matter, or uh, this is my um, uh, this is my identity. For instance, like uh, you know, I I am. I am uh, Sri Lankan or I am Irish or something like that. I, I don't need to defend these identities. So um, this is very important, uh, this idea of identity around location or identity around group or clan or um, caste or, you know, we, we find all kinds of ways to uh, identify and to form a kind of an abode. And... Um, so uh, uh, an abode is is uh, any place that we habituate, any place that we consider ours, mine. 
that kind of a way. An abode can have, uh, you know, we can use this in positive or negative meanings, like we describe the Brahma Viharas uh, as a, an abode, the the abode, the Vihara of the, the Brahmas. But uh, this kind of an abode is, is uh, here, we're not drawn to any abodes. Like even, even the good abodes we're not drawn to, like the Brahma Viharas itself. We, we don't, we're not captured by, by uh, the abode. For one detached from perception, there are no knots. So here again, perception is a, is a view. It's it's a, a perception here, meaning the way I look at something. So how I perceive it. So I I you know I uh, when when we have a, a very quite detailed meditative mind, we can see how perception is forming in the mind. That we we go from. Um, a crude uh, sensory object, like I might perceive something in my field of vision, and then I, I build up, oh, that that is a human, or that is a male or a female, or uh, that is a, 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 a lay supporter, or it's a monastic. You know, I start to build up the identity of the the object that I'm perceiving. So I, I go from this kind of coarse recognition to uh, more and more detailed, uh, a more and more refined perception of what that object is. Um, but here I am detached from perception means I, I perceive the object, but I, I'm not, um, I'm not uh, attached to a view or an opinion or a conceitedness around that object. So for one liberated by wisdom, there are no delusions. So there are no delusions about what the object is. You know, they just see a see a scene, or that they 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 know what they know. They're not adding a story on top. So in this way, we're talking about delusion as being kind of like a story that we add to the um, raw information that is in front of us, or we don't we don't perceive clearly. So we fill in the gaps in our ignorance with a story. So by, for one liberated by uh, wisdom, there are no delusions. But those who have grasped perceptions and views wander in the world creating friction. So this is a very interesting point. He comes back to um, that, that it is these views and perceptions that we grasp onto that uh, cause us to wander in the world. So I can perceive things as mine. Or I perceive enemies as not mine. And I have views as a result. I build views on top of that, like I am better than, I am equal to, or I am inferior to. And I wonder in the world, creating friction. So this is the the basis of friction between people, is this uh, ego and uh, conceitedness built on views and opinions. So this is a, a first run at uh, these last at the end of this sutta. Yeah, the one before the last. <coughs> I would like to <coughs> present the Pali presentation. Na Vedagu Dithya Namutya Na Mana Meti Na Hi Tammatayo Tammayo So Na Kamuna No Pisute Na Neyo Anupatito Sa Nivesa Nesu There are there are very how do you call uh, Words, they are very quite boiled down words and uh, many, many interpretations possible. And uh, so this interpretation is pertaining to this translator. What I am t- uh, talking about is that the Buddha Jayanti translation, is, uh, the senior Buddhist monks and uh, Thero other monks, they give the translation. There may be some shades of meaning. Uh, the, the, here the Buddha says, a person who has four noble truths, understanding, will never get carried away by views. Uh, not uh, by visuals, by sounds, smell, tasting and touching. Uh, mutia, no, don't go into decide. They are adding some information but not decisive. Whatever you see is something new but not decisive. Whatever you hear, yes, you are hearing, but don't take seriously. 
So likewise, everything uh, not leading immediately. You don't get carried away. You are not reacting too quickly. Whenever uh, something I saw, I have some desire for that. So I am not going to be by desire. I know I am. I have a desire. And I will get a view telling that I am so lucky person. That is why uh, I got this view. So I am not going to assume. So assuming is the more key term. Last time also that is what I just wanted to take in for today's discussion also. Tammayo. Tammayo means assuming. Whatever you see, you assume. I am lucky person or unlucky person. That's why I see. I saw it. That's why I, I so a bad thing or good thing. That assumption, assum- assuming nature is our personality. Tammaya. Tammaya ta is the word as I mentioned last time, the Thai monk, he said that uh, sum up whole teaching of the Buddha. Just like Appamad, just like diligence. So whenever we see, whenever we hear, smell and tasting, touching, we try to assume or we try to attribute and we take a stand. I saw it. This is my seeing. So I get patent recorded that I am the person who discovered it. Bullshit. The Western world, everything. The Buddha discovered everything. And at the end of this book, not right reserved. This is the only book in the, on the earth. No right reserved. With this everything. All the other bullshit, everything is right reserved. Don't electronically or don't copy without due respect. What a nonsense. That is called Tammeta. That is called assuming I am the person who is well presented, I have the idea, that is mine. So ultimately die with it and die for it. And we become disciples and say, I am a disciple, so and so. Buddha says, no relationship with you. If you are this thing, understand, that is the term Vedago, not related to the Hindu Veda. So these monks, they are quite against the Veda, the, the Hindu tradition. And this book is talking about the idealistic Veda person. That means Hindu person. No. Buddha was used the Veda. Veda, Veda Gu means he's an expert in his whatever the skill. Uh, in Burmese tradition, Veda Gu means professor. All the professors are known as Veda Gu. Because he is the professor for that subject. So any Veda, any person who is uh, Vedaku, worth calling Vedaku, has no view. He is having no ditti and uh, mana. For them, whatever the seeing is just seeing. Whatever the hearing is just hearing. When uh, the, 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 They are unassuming. Atamayata. So that is the worst thing I find in the artificial intelligence. This bloody shit. After taking drugs, thinking, 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 I says, I discovered this, I connected this and that, and it's artificial intelligence. So I feel sick. They are not, they, they were mindful. If they are mindful, it's a completely opposite of it. Not that mindful people, after calming down, they can see the relationship and they can say these things can be assimilated. So I would say that if the artificial intelligence fellows are meditating, that will be better. Otherwise, we are blindly following artificial intelligence because utterly based on assumption. I am the person compiling this, coining terms, coining words. And nothing else in the Oxford University person day. Nothing happened in the Harvard University. They are just coining terms and selling to the third world countries. We people sell the lands and go there and come back and going to rule the Sri Lanka. They don't have rights. We are people from the earth, we are people from the land, and we have, we are meditating, and we need no anyone's, uh, I mean, uh, instructions, because Buddha has given comprehensive, these bloody fellows, Tammaya fellows, I mean, assuming people, they never refer to the Buddha. This is, no, this is my discovery. I think it is their partial nature, but this is talking about, if someone is an expert or professor in the term, they have no views. They have no uh, assumption or, or conceit. And if there's a conceit, he knows 
this prop up happened due to the conceit. This is propping up happened, it is due to the view, uh, no harm. Not that you must be completely free of view and uh, perception, or sorry, the conceit. As far as you know, you can tell others, I am sorry, I am so conceited, I have this idea. That's my idea. No harm. But if you are going to say, this is the truth, and I must be re record that in the patent, and no one can copy my patent record rights. Eh? <laughs> what nonsense. They are not humanistic. They are very narrow-minded fellows. They, they, their discovery is not for humanity. They go for their wife and other kind of thing, and wife is sleeping with another woman, person. Uh, even if he is getting the uh, rights for the <laughs> kind of thing. So therefore, Tammeta is the word I just wanted to bring it to the discussion. Whenever someone assuming, taken a stand, he is difficult to wash and clean. He has got stuck. But we in the discussion, we can of course take a stand and say, I have that kind of a view, I have that kind of a conceit, but I don't... Hope you to follow me. This is my view. And I learn that view and the perception also with the interaction with you. Otherwise, I don't know. I have to interact with other people. Then only they will teach me. So I have to be thankful. Not to the concept, concept, concept idea, not to the view. But I knew at least before the death. I know that I am a conceited. But these artificial intelligent fellows, they never lose conceit. They never lose the view because they want to make it commodity. They wanted to make money. And now it has been, it has been already introduced in many countries as a subject. And many people are teaching now. So people are often asking me, what is my view regarding artificial intelligence? I say it's a concept. It's a, it's a wandering mind, daydreaming, fantasizing. Be mindful. So it appears like I am against artificial intelligence, but I am also using so much of artificial intelligence, high tech and all the kind of thing. I use them as a servant. I never let artificial intelligence to come and interpret terms where I attribute it to the Tammeta. Tammeta means reason by it, reason by view, reason by conceit. Tammeya, or oh, it is just made out of steel, made out of copper, is uh, ayomaya, chintamaya, like it's a one phrase. And tamme means whatever you see, you assume from that. You hear. But the expert person, he never takes that kind of a stand. He says, I saw it. It will process later and will come into the thinking pattern, not immediately. So therefore, this Vedaku term and the tammeyo, uh, they are very crucial uh, expressions, so they they need uh, detailed analysis. Uh, not the karma, not the sutin paminiyavi yute, not by doing, na kamuna, na sutin. By listening, uh, you are not take this as a whole, as a new thing. You just incorporate that into the kind of thing, uh, and therefore he is. Uh, not taken a stand, uh, not based upon the views. Uh, and trushna. There are three things, conceit, view, and the desire. And uh, conceit is the worst because this is the last thing to go. Uh, desire and uh, views are not so deep. Uh, by so on itself, uh, you remove the view. Sakata Anagami itself, you remove the Trishna. Mana is the very difficult, so we have to accept it. And once the Mana happened, views and the uh, Trishna fighting. That is our internal conflict. That is our inner chatter. So by discussion, we have to understand by uh, sharing with others. That is the what I just... Uh, that is why I asked the last time also, please take that Gata into this time. Uh, because I thought of sharing it little further will be helpful for many. Then the last sentence. Sanya viratthasana santiganta. Have you completed last one also? Yeah. Yeah, the last one, Venerable Jnananda, uh, the, uh, quoted again and again, it's like a motto. When there is no uh, sanya, sanya means uh, taken perce perception, 
and cognition and recognition happen with the perception. Whenever you have something cognized or recognized, you are sick with the perception. If there is no such, you take it as not so seriously, uh, he will never had any conflict, no ganta, no, no hitch. Your hitch always with, you have taken some concept uh, as a, you are driven by a concept, taken it hard and fast, then you are always fighting. And Panya Vimuttasa Nasanti Moha, if someone is understanding it's a matter of communication, it's a matter of rhetorism, it's a matter of verbal conflict, then uh, he will not misunderstand people, he will not misunderstand books, he will not misunderstand what the people are talking. They are very superficial. So therefore Panya, those who have Panya, no confusion. Sanyancha Dittincha Ye Agahesung, anyone is taking this perception as uh, hard and fast, and the view are hard and fast, they always fighting with other people, go all around the world and arguing all the time. So with the media, with the social media today, everyone is talking about everything, not leading. They want everyone to listen to him, them. So they ask, please click, subscribe, please click this one. And next time also I'll give another bucket of muck. So no one is taking care. Whatever the media we are developing, it won't make uh, positive or negative. Some changes are happening. So the apo sanyanta jittinche ye agahisung. Anyone is taking the perception and the view, they are always fighting. They are always uh, uh, debating. They are argue, arguing. And uh, present day, whole energy on the earth is misused for these debate and arguments. They have no chance to sit and wait, no chance to turn inward, just chance to be simply mindful. Because of these arguments and everything, make them busy, even if they are closing their eyes. Even if they are uh, looking inward, they can't. Because so much of agitation, so Pandita Saidi used to say, you just before going to sit, just talk five minutes with someone, and you can see at least after sitting 10 minutes that lingering talks are happening in the mind. So this is what the media is doing today. So without media, you are not a citizen. You are just a, just a monkey, not a monk. So keep as much as possible. I mean, we can't do away with that, but understand. Therefore, if you know, if you wise enough, uh, whatever the people get uh, mixed up with, people eat... Amused with no harm. Because it is always the case. So don't worry about someone's misunderstanding or views. Uh, don't think that your duty is to correct him. No. Mind your own business. Be mindful. That is what my motto. It appears a little, little, little uh, harsh. So if that's so, we can go to the next sutta, please. So the next sutta is the uh, Pura Beda Sutta. Uh, which is um, Bhikkhu Bodhi calls before the breakup. So just before I begin this, this is a, a subtle sutta, and um, I want to give a little bit of the background. So um, uh, in quite uh, an early time in the Buddha's realm, there was a, a conflict uh, arose between the uh, Kolian and the uh, Sakyan clans, and it was a water dispute over... Uh, over yeah. over yeah rivers and water so when the rivers would run low in water they would dam the uh the rivers to divert the water for irrigation uh, for crop growing and uh you know so there was a dispute over this uh, water that was being diverted <coughs> in the yeah during the drought or during the slow period so they they was they were going to get into a conflict and a fight and uh, the buddha um uh, intervened uh, using his psychic powers and he intervened sort of uh, between them and he told the, the the history of the two different groups and and showed how they were relatives and as a result of this um, 250 uh, men from either side uh, became bhikkhus so there was 500 men 500 means a lot of people it doesn't necessarily mean exactly 500 it's but a, a lot of people 
got faith in the Buddha and um, decided to become bhikkhus. And uh, then uh, because of this, uh, they uh, they took the the Buddha was teaching them. He taught them various different suttas, and they uh, they became uh, enlightened to varying degrees between uh, Sotapanna and to Anagami, but they were not fully enlightened. And then uh, he taught some more, and uh, they became fully enlightened. And then the uh, the devas, in recognition of this kind of great um, feat by the Buddha to to tame his own relatives, to to bring them to the Dhamma, uh, they they also uh, wanted to a large group of them gathered around the Buddha, and they wanted to hear the teachings. And so the uh, the Buddha realized that uh, this was a, going to be a, a difficult group of uh, beings to teach. So he he divided the um, the, the devas into different uh, di- different dip- dispositions according to their disposition, whether they were um, anger type or whether they were lustful types, um, whether they were deluded types, uh, whether they were. Uh, into uh, like thinking conjecture so there was six different types of uh, devas and he he taught d- uh, six different suttas to the different uh, according to their disposition and he did another uh, sort of psychic feat to help uh, the the teaching so he 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 uh, formed a uh, image of himself so that he could uh, have a question and uh, reply response so uh, so there was uh, you know there was the buddha and then there was the psychic form of the buddha and the psychic form of the buddha would po- pose the questions and the the buddha would answer the questions and he did this to kind of um, assert his authority to the devas, so that they wouldn't um, find fault in his teaching, um, and that they could uh, therefore grasp and uh, apprehend his teaching um, uh, quickly and easily. So the, this sutta that we're going to begin today was the sutta that he taught to devas who were, uh, I think, lustful in disposition. Uh, I would like to add that uh, thank you for the reminding the history. Uh, the debate about the irrigation water was uh, very uh, iconic in the Buddhist life. And the Buddha says, uh, blood, and they are about to fight in the both the uh, uh, banks, one thing from the mother's side, one thing from the father's side. Buddha is sitting on the, in the middle of the river. He says, now you are going to shed blood. His blood is thicker than water. So therefore, both of you are relatives. So you are fighting for water, ultimately this thing can happen. So ultimately they agreed and as a sign that so much of young people got ordained and the Rohini Nadi is the river's name and during the outside period it's a heavy fighting for the water. Both of are agricultural people. And then uh, their enlightenment to be enhanced and that is why the Buddha creating another Buddha and that Buddha is asking question. This all the question no human can ask. Human are asking why dollars are fluctuating, and the inflation, why the uh, jobs are uh, the no the, no jobs uh, or oh, unemployment, bloody shit. And uh, the, some present day some good Buddhist says uh, we are unlucky enough because during the Buddha's time you would have asked this question. Buddha would have given the solid answers. I think Buddha is slam you telling that you bloody fellows always take an economical stand. But that is why the Buddha is creating another Buddha and asking. And the Purabeda is what you should do before the death. And everyone is asking why we are living. This is before Purabedo. Uh, what, what, I, what should I do because the breakdown and the death and why we are living? Why did we come here? And what is the nonsense we are doing? And how much we are carried away by the day-to-day affairs and the whole issue of coming on the earth and living as a human being lost. And uh, I two times I have delivered 
when by chandratan listen this stroke while he was in avyana then only he decided to come to nisarvani he wrote the whole uh, this thing and he published the book because he told that when i am listening i i was thinking about why should i become a monk what is the purpose of becoming a monk and living in now you know living in here so he wanted to make it something practical so therefore purabhedi sutta this may be for the third time third time and main thing is why should we live what is the purpose of this living how much you are carried away by this corona how much we are carried away by the chinese and russian and american economies how much we are carried away by this technology how much we are carried away by the environmental pollution and does that really affect your mindfulness and uh, who the hell can come and tell you that uh, please be mindful no one that is why the buddha says only another buddha can ask this question otherwise people are taking this as a topic of the debate what is the purpose of living why the god at lastly at last created the human being and why well, forget about the god now you become a human being in the buddha buddha dispensation what is your primary prime important uh, the responsibilities it's completely gone government is pulling to one side economy is pulling to other side and the socialists are pulling to other side doctors media and the lawyers killing not allowing a split second your wife your husband your relatives and your boss says ah my mother used to say we we are close to candy and candy is a lot of fish in the the main uh, how do you call lake and we put uh, how do you call flakes rice flakes they come and pick within one second so just like our east and every thought moment is picked by so much of fish we we can't we can't wait that to disappear soon you put disappear the present moment is such completely disappeared we are carried away by that idea this idea and modern ideas western ideas eastern ideas past ideas future ideas so much so we are smart enough not to be mindful on the present moment pura bedo vipassano it it a main idea and there are six uh, that kind of character types the buddha is asking Uh, the, the created buddha is asking to depict to show this kind of character type they are always taking that kind of question that kind of worries and that kind of diseases that kind of climatological situation and they ruin and perish and die they never think they have the, such a versatility that they have they have such options no they become singles buddhists i must protect singhala sri lanka and i must protect buddhism don't talk anyone to come and meddle with that so you 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 miss the bus so purabeda sutta in that sense it's a fairly long one uh thank you for the reminding the the traditional history and of course they are they are like a fabrication there's no relationship to the content of the sutta with the fighting for water and the relatives and 500 become half enlightened they they are they are fabrications i mean but in anyway, we give kind of a atmosphere under what circumstances of buddha uh, gave so you have to understand the uh, go into the crux before going to crux uh, all time we have that kind of a nidana nidana means a historical background or case history and uh, thank you sudha amro study these things and give us Uh, present us in the discussion so that is all what i have to share, talk yeah so uh um so this is interesting um that it follows from the previous one if we remember in the previous sutta uh magandia wanted to offer his daughter to the buddha and uh the buddha basically uh insults the 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 parents by saying that he he wouldn't touch the daughter no more than he would he would touch uh you know excrement or or urine so uh in 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 the in the religious life there are different approaches to dealing with lust so mm-hmm. one is to look at the repugnant uh qualities uh one is to look at um you know how how the 32 body parts are intrinsically disgusting if you take them apart there there's nothing attractive 
there's nothing attractive about the the guts or the hair or the 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 skin or something like that if you see them in detail they're not they're not uh, attractive it's only when we form a perception we can form the perception of beauty so uh it, this sutta is is uh subtle it's 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 different in nature so uh, uh as mahatero has mentioned uh, there is a nidana as i've mentioned earlier on uh, as a background so that the in this case uh, the buddha was the the psychic form of the buddha was to- uh, asking posing questions to the to the buddha and it was for the benefit of these uh, devas who were lustful in disposition so uh you can see this uh, these suttas are like a pair like a, a twins uh one is is uh telling parents uh rather shockingly about uh why the buddha wasn't attracted to their daughter and and here we're telling um devas how not to be attracted to their own body or life and uh we have to appreciate that devas are beings enjoying you know very good karma very good uh, intellect and health and long life and uh good uh situations so they're um they're really you know they're really in a comfortable place in the world and um you know how do you tell these beings to not be lustful and um it, you can see that the that the devas are more refined so uh sort of telling them uh something coarse like the 32 body parts doesn't quite work for them so uh instead uh, the buddha teaches them marana nusati which is like reflection on on death death is approaching um that uh, you know what about the break up of the body because even though you are in a good situation for this uh existence for this life uh it will come to an end and then you will be subject to karma subject to rebirth subject to uh you know the the fruit of your karma meaning you know you you can be in a good uh situation in this life but in future lives it's uncertain so he had to uh provoke these kind of lustful uh uh devas uh those uh, lustful and disposition to to kind of take it seriously what he was teaching them about that uh that that the dhamma is is about um solving a very difficult problem which is like what about what about the break up of your body what about the end so i uh, i'll begin with the first uh, the posing of the question by this this uh, psychic form of the buddha so this buddha says how does he see how does he behave the one who is said to be peaceful when he asked by me or when asked by me o gotama describe the supreme person so again this is a quite a a refined question um he's asking to describe the qualities of of the buddha the supreme person um he's talking about peacefulness which is very attractive to these lustful uh uh kind of monks so he's drawing them in like they they they're curious about well yeah what's peaceful what's nice uh, oh yeah what are these beautiful qualities of this uh, beautiful buddha you know uh how does he look like how does he behave you know so you can imagine like uh talking about your favorite pop star here you know uh or your favorite actor you know how does he how 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 does he see how does he behave uh you know some very very um attractive kind of um you know this is this is to catch the attention of these kind of uh as it's called lustful in disposition these are kind of uh, people who like nice things and they're in a very good uh, situation so the the buddha has to kind of answer this in a he doesn't directly answer this back of course so then uh the buddha says in re- answer devoid of cravings before the break up not dependent on the past not to be reckoned in the middle for him there are no preferences so here the the buddha immediately brings uh the 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 crux of this is that uh you know what about death but he doesn't say it in a kind of a way that is uh like coarse like in the previous one um because uh for these very refined kind of beings um they would be offended by uh such references and and also like depending on their um 
if like if they were very high beings like brahmas and stuff like that like they, they don't have uh, they don't have a gut and they don't have other things like that so they they delight they their nutriment is is a different kind of nutriment so for these refined beings uh you have to kind of provoke them with maran and usati on uh on death on the breakup so here uh the death is described as the breakup of the the body after death so uh, again even in modern times like we can be very uh avoidant of mentioning death so we'll just say oh somebody passed on but uh here the buddha uh avoids you know um saying something like they passed on instead he emphasizes that they break up the body breaks up uh, that's the end of that uh, existence or that um, beneficial time and place it'll break up so devoid of cravings before the break up not dependent on the past not to be reckoned in the middle for him there are no preferences so again we we come to this very important word of not no preferences or no identification or um you know this is the crux and not dependent on the past um we're here talking about the past meaning uh oh you know who i am or uh, not dependent on the past meaning the my past karma meaning um i am enjoying the fruits of my past karma um so i i'm in a good situation now but it is dependent on the past uh not to be reckoned in the middle so uh we 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 also like from the past we come to the middle which is the present but not to be reckoned on in the middle meaning we will we will go on to break up so you you can't just look at the the oh i i i did good deeds in the past and now i'm in a great position and here i am and aren't i great and the buddha is saying no you're going to break up you know you you you're 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 heading for a train wreck here and you have to realize that uh, that uh, buddha is a person who is now devoid of cravings and they're not dep- they're no longer dependent on the past good karmas they're no longer sort of uh, to be reckoned by the middle by the present how they are and they don't have any preferences so this is kind of getting down to the crux of the matter around conceitedness around views and other things that we've been discussing already and that uh, by listening i would like to add two points the 32 parts last saturday it happened me to give a three talks on the satipatthana sutta about the 32 parts usually in my talks i don't talk about i am talking about the mindfulness not to worry about the repulsivity of the body and kind of the, it's a kind of a conditioning of the mind but anyway it happened me to give yeah, then i highlighted few points who pandita saido pointed out because whenever a woman or a ben ska or a actor taken as a one unit is beautiful proportionate and kind of thing. when they separated not a single part you can play even a, take it as a play thing this is a shit the buddha directly say shit so take the summary or the uh, what is the sum up talk say the lambda lambda letter i don't know it's a lambda also this is a the summation of everything you you write a letter like that yeah. lambda so when everything co- put together very beautiful very aesthetic but once you remove reductionism is a so repulsive so we we take myself ego very beautiful by is coming out of this the body parts perception feelings and uh, my volitional activities and the mind individual parts is a real crime so that is one thing and the second thing is magandya is a good she has done a good merit but her merits are blocking her to go to the better she is a good her goodness is so attractive so possessed so obsessed it is utterly blocking the better the devas are good they are done with uh, very past karma or the buddhist this thing therefore they are so attracted to that so adhere to that they never think about the, the buddha 
and the present day the first world country. They are good. I mean, they have the technology, they have the whole countries develop and all the kinds of things. But the suffering, exactly the same. So then, how can how can we share? Why they are, why don't they why why the why can't they think about the liberation? No, they want to protect their the heritage, shit. So therefore, b- b- your goodness is the utter block for you to become better. So that is the skill you have to do, pura beda. Before you die, you have to understand there is a better thing, not that you are good bad. You are good. Why don't you think about the better? That is the third meaning of kusala. Kusala means you are always thinking about a betterment. So once you become, Pandita Saito says, once you become good, don't throw your parties and enter, entertain. Just see what are the bet, what are the things you would have done so that you would have gone to the better. So we are, we are happy now. The country is in trouble and kind of thing, but we have our four requisites and we feel better off. But don't waste time. They don't waste opportunity. So therefore the question is, Katandasi Katansi Lopasampurnoti Vuchiti, who is the calm and quiet man, person, with the moral responsibilities and behavior? The Buddha says person who knows before the death I have to make sure not to hanker behind the past or not to excite get excited the future. Don't adhere to the present also. So it's a nice way of explaining mindfulness. Present moment. And whether even you enlighten, this is applicable. Whether you are deprived person, whether you are outcasted person, still it is applicable. So therefore Purabeda Sutta is a knock on your head. Don't throw away a party, don't be happy. There is still something you have to do. If you think about the overall, the, the lambda situation, the, the how, how do you say it? sum total, sum total everything uh, that is beautiful. But when you remove, so God created everything is good. They say it's in, artificial intelligence. Sorry, sorry, impor, uh, intelligent design, but it's a shit. It's a, it's a Buddha says he create he can't say creator. Because he has created the water ball of suffering. Everywhere. So it's a destructor. Not the normal destructor. Utter destructor. So therefore cessation of whatever the creation is a good. Because the creation is a suffering. So therefore don't look at the beginning of the creation. And that is you will you will you feel like killing the God. But if you see the cessation of suffering, our oh God is good. Because he has given the willpower, or my will, individual self, for you to think about the the cessation. And easy to see the cessation of individual parts than the sum total. Because sum total is camouflage. That's the point where ego is happening. So you have to cut open and see, and you can take one by one. You are repulsive, sure, but you can take one by one. So therefore, Upanisha decided to put this uh, repulsivity into three cracks, cut into pieces, and see the totality as the aesthetic, and make it sizable work. But cut into pieces and you make a sizable, so you can handle with one part. And once that is done, you can go to the second part. Don't think you are better off now. You don't think that you are contented now. You have to do something. So these these are the things. Usually in the repulsivity, we we never think inside meditation. We see only the samatha part. But to Pandita side, even then, very short paras you can read it in the in this life itself, in this very life book. So whenever the uh, lust or desire happen, you have to have this tool of repulsivity. But once the lust happens, you can't develop repulsivity. You have to have the already developed repulsivity meditation whenever the lust happens. But don't addict it into that because it is giving perversions in the mind. Because during the time of the Buddha, one day Buddha gave a big sermon about the repulsivity of the body. And he went for a silent sermon, silent retreat. When he come back, many monks committed suicide. And the population gone down. 
and my buddha is asking for venerable ananda and there's something wrong why are these monks why bante you told that uh, the whole life is repulsive and kind they started killing themselves and there's one special guy he told if you can give me the robe and the uh, the robe bowl i'll cut your head and one day he was washing his sword in the water and told am i doing a good thing because innocent monks and they wanted to die and i am promoting in and facilitating then he may be it is wrong and there's one god came walking over the water says no no you are a facilitator why not that these monks are really going to heaven you please continue so when the buddha come then the buddha says repulsivity is with perversions anapanasati never so repulsivity is a prescription drug it is not the over the counter so someone has to recommend you this is the way. but the, by but that, that time when you are in trouble you can't develop repulsivity you must have already developed tactic so therefore it's called four guardian meditation who said to analyze it in, in a very pragmatic way but in sri lanka all the monks they always think about the repulsivity of the body ultimately they go for self mortification so they are not eating food instead go to the doctor and ask him this disease and that this is i can't sleep i am no hunger and kind of thing instead they we ask them to why don't you eat little green leaves no 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 i can't but if you give a handful of drugs that you can swallow what a foolishness specifically for us monks so before becoming a monk venerable dhammikan everyone told you are going to go to an asylum all the people are mad i mean i mean with views they think they are superior being they are with uh, sila and everything but they are self mortification they always torture in themselves why can't we have a normal life i mean have amenities and have a healthy life no 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 it is bad because of this uh, repulsivity because it is uh, all emphasized in sri lankan uh, sasana all the monks village monks they are not happy with mindfulness they say it is very how do you call it is just water like there is no substance but the buddha anusuti and asuba bhavana are oh, very very religious full of merits so this also related to purabeda sutta is something like that but you have to think we have to think it from the two sides how the individual parts become a shit and when the some total come when they come into the very gloss over and look and all the kind of that is what we call pharmaceutical industry this is the one deciding the governments the buddha ki tamato says they are not deciding governments but they have so much of powers by investing so much of money they can interpret everything because people are happy with with the beauty that's a, that's the advertisement today with the monk bald headed and green that the the brown robes uh, what repels what attractiveness i feel like cops pura bedo <laughs> so they are they are making a, some kind of a, some kind of a threat to the the beautiful world or the aesthetic world so therefore brahma brahmanas and others they are not happy with the monks they say they are kind of a revolution they are implementing a revolution and yogis and kind of thing they are living in the society but they are not appreciating it they are thinking what should i do before my death so these two points that the two body parts one separated completely different notion put everything together like a jigsaw puzzle something different and the other thing is we all are better good people but you are very idiots because we are not searching for better we are so obsessed with our goodness telling others oh why can't why don't you also come like us we are good people you see when we miss the bus it is not your main job you have to think about better that is what wonderful uh, i have to add so the uh, next uh, the buddha re- answer elaborates he says he is without anger unafraid not boastful not regretful of speaking with reflection not restlessness he is truly a muni controlled in speech so uh you know here here's this emphasis on on speech because uh speech is very uh, n- neighboring to uh to thought so uh n- not only is uh 
is a Muni, uh, an enlightened uh, supreme person, um, without anger, unafraid, not boastful, not regretful, of speaking with reflection, not restless. He is truly a Muni controlled in speech. So there's the inner speech uh, of the mind and then there's the outer speech of the, the, the mouth. So there's always this emphasis in the, in the Buddhist texts on, on speech as being very uh, con- close to the, the nature of the thinking of the mind. So to be without f- anger, to be free of anger, to be f- uh, unafraid, and uh, again, it's it's to be seen and experienced in one's life how fear and and anger come together as emotions. So when we when we're afraid, we 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 want to run away, and when we're angry, we want to fight. So these are kind of two sides of the same coin of um, the the fight or flight response. So the physiology is the same in the body. You know, we have adrenaline. And uh, we have we 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 get uh, the blood is going out to the limbs, and we want to fight. We want to to um, we we want to run away. So the only difference between fighting and running away is whether we perceive the object the that we can defeat the object by fighting, or if the object if the aggressor can defeat us, then we need to run away. That's the only difference, really. So again, uh, in contrast to anger and and fear is uh, this sort of boastful quality. Uh, so boastful is is again this kind of uh, superior or um, making um, puffing up. So uh, not regretful. Um, so that's kind of contrasting these two ideas of boastful, boasting on the one hand and regret on the other hand. So these are also um, kind of subtle qualities of the mind as we 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 get into uh, meditation after anger settles down after the, the we we deal with this kind of lust and anger then we we tend to come to sloth and torpor and uh, regret and remorse so again we're we're talking here about how these qualities of mind come together and they come together in a in an order um, normally when meditators come they 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 have to deal with lust and anger and then over time as they calm down within the monastery then they have to deal with uh, a desire to be um, somebody important or you know that they have regret and remorse so you have these kind of narrations and stories going on in their mind of of speaking with reflection not restlessness so this is again very important uh, the, that uh, we we speak with reflection. Uh, so again, we're bringing mindfulness into into our speech. We're we're not reacting to the other person or to the other party. We 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 reflect. We we are speaking with reflection. Not not restlessness. So again, this restless quality is like restlessness and remorse. And it's in contrast to uh, reflection, like a reflection meaning here, like the reflection on a water on a on a pool of water. You would, it would uh, reflect the, the 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 trees around. So uh, to to just be a reflection of of the good qualities of the mind, to be a reflection of the people around us, not restlessness. You know, not not uh, if you look at a water that is uh, restless or being disturbed, it doesn't reflect. He truly is uh, Muni, controlled in speech. So here again, this Muni is, is a, a wise person or a, a, a mendicant, and they are controlled in speech. I, I think I much prefer the word managed, but yeah, controlled in speech. And um, so this is uh, the first the, the sutta here, that we're, our first stanza, that we're really getting into the... Uh, d- attributes and he starts with speech um, and the importance of speech and how it reflects the inner speech of the mind and to tame this is is a great um, difficulty you know it's a great skill to to not just uh, be controlled in speech externally but more importantly to be at peace internally in one speech uh, so we are it is time to stop and the, even the first tense are 
even though it is talking about the mindfulness not to bury the future and the past and says the final task is to before the death you must be free of tanha is a great task and the second thing is external talk and internal talk and re- recently in the in the un conference uh, the i try to break the attention about the inter- external talk about the environmental crisis but of the internal talk you have tanha mana ditti with that you try to sort it out with the united nation you have nothing to do with yourself but when the reflect back come back to the this thing all the religious master says answer is lying within so this is uh, uh, referring to that so therefore i hope uh, we tomorrow next time we will discuss with the starting with the second stanza and uh, by that time we may have some more reflection for us uh, how to think about get it of tanha before the death thank you very much for the participation